Hey folks, Rob with Two Guys in a Ride, and we're out of the Chanhassen Autoplex, and today is Cars and Caves, and it was Military Appreciation Day, and it was just a fantastic event. And again, we're with Gene Berghoff, and before we uh, actually talked to him about a Morgan that he's got, and a Jaguar, and a couple of other motorcycles, but Gene, today you have an extremely great story with a very special motorcycle, and I'm gonna let you tell us about that. All right, what we have here is a 1949 Norton International. Now Norton's been around for years and it still is today, but this uh, this bike, the International, was a very special bike that they produced uh, many years ago, back in the 30s, 40s, and it was considered one of the fastest motorcycles on any track in the world for a number of years. They never exported the International to the United States. And uh, my dad, who was into motorcycles and racing motorcycles out of Detroit, Michigan, mm -hmm. he uh, decided to get his hands on an international. And he managed to get one out of the UK because again, it was never exported. And so this over here, pictures, take this off right now, huh? Pictures of my dad on his 49 international. So this is my dad back in 1949. And uh, years later, many years later, to be exact, probably about 1985, 86, he and I talked about restoring a motorcycle together. And I said, do you have any idea what you'd like to restore? He said, well, why don't we restore a Norton International? Now, I had collected motorcycles my entire life. I'd never heard of an International. I knew what a Norton was. So he said, oh, it was a bike I had in 49. So I said, well, I'll see what I can do. And so the internet didn't exist in those days, but I started making calls to all the major cities to see if anybody knew if there was an international round that we could buy and restore. And eventually I found one out in LA and the shop said, yeah, there's a guy that's got one and it's gonna cost you $7,000, but it's basically in parts. And I called my dad back and I said, Dad, I found one, but they want $7,000, it's just a box of parts. And I said, and they told me it was never exported. How did you get your hands on it? And he said, yeah, now that I think about it, they're right, it never was, it wasn't easy, but my dad was the type of guy, when he put his mind on something, he could pull it off. And anyways, he said, they're crazy. There's no way in hell I'm gonna buy a motorcycle, a box of parts for $7,000. So that ended our project of restoring a motorcycle at Norton International. Well, a few years later, he was tinkering down in the shop and he was pretty, uh, pretty skilled at working with machinery. And uh, he started life uh, in trade school out of Detroit. He grew up in Detroit, went to trade school, eventually got a degree in engineering, eventually got, became president of a very large international company but he liked to still tinker with machines. So he started building this sculpture behind me here. Here's photographs, there's my dad in about 1987, maybe 86, building this sculpture. And he was building the sculpture. The scene or the subject matter was this photograph. When he had bought his motorcycle in 49 to break it in and get it ready for racing, he put 2,000 miles on it the first weekend. So he and his buddy drove motorcycles up into Canada and just to break it in. And my dad loved dogs. He loved animals. And he had stopped just to pet a stray dog and his buddy shot this photograph. And that's what the subject matter is of the sculpture that he did many, many, many years later. And you can see he went down to the Humane Society just to try out different sizes of dogs. You know, he needed something, of course, to look at as he built his sculpture. But the entire sculpture is all made out of metal. He, of course, would start. Some of the components would be clay or wood. And you can see in this shape he would do drawings. You can see I have the, one of his drawings behind all of these photos. So that's the story on this sculpture over here. Here, we'll put this down here. So this sculpture, like I said, it's all metal. He spent a long time building this. You can see holes where he drilled holes to put the spokes in. Everything was hand formed. In fact, when he was done, I joked with him. I said, Dad, 
the amount of time it took you to build this sculpture, we could have restored three of these motorcycles. <laughs> and so that's an interesting story. Like I said, he went up into Canada and he went up to Gatsby, I believe it's in Ontario, Canada. And in fact, it's a photograph. And these are photographs of my dad's trip. These are photographs that he and his buddy now, took. You had told us, Gene, uh, last time we visited that, uh, was it your brother that had gone yes. to this town? And you said, wait a minute, I think that's the town that your dad had gone. Do you want to that's tell us right. about that? My brother Chuck, he and his wife took a cruise through Canada about a year ago. And any time he traveled, he would send us texts and tell us where he and his wife Sue are. And they were taking a cruise, what is this, a, the, the main river passage through that area of the country. Okay. And he said, we're in Gatsby, Ontario. And I said to him, I said, Chuck, you, know, you realize dad took a trip to Gatsby, Ontario on a, a motorcycle once. And my brother immediately texted back. He said, Gene, no, no, you're not right. Um, dad never came to Gatsby, Ontario. He, nobody would come to Gatsby, Ontario. He said, it's just not that, a, it's not the type of place you would come, mm. especially on a motorcycle. He said, there's not much here. There just isn't much here. So you obviously don't know what you're talking about. And so I thought, nah, I'm pretty sure I know what I'm talking about. So I ran down to the garage here. I mean, I'm, I only live. 10, 15 minutes from here. I ran down to the garage, grabbed that book, and I shot pictures on my camera, on my phone, of some of these buildings. And I verified the name on the plaque here, sent it back to him immediately, all within about an hour from when he told me it can't be true. And he texted back, he goes, oh my gosh, I can see this building outside our ship, on from the cruise ship. He really did come here. Why would he come here? And I said, Chuck, you gotta remember, he had no real destination in mind. He just needed to put a lot of miles on as quick as he could, <laughs> and it was just a place he ended up. So yeah, interesting story. That's pretty cool. How many years later was that that your brother actually was there versus when well, my dad, your would, dad was there? My dad would have been there in 49. Okay. My brother was there last year. Oh. So okay. 2018. Wow. So many, many years later. To bring that that full circle, I guess. Yes. Really cool. Wow. Well, folks, that's it. This is a 1949 Norton 500, and this is the Model 30 International. <laughs> it's beautiful. I love the styling. What about it? Uh, I mean, is there any particular feature that you like about this vehicle well, now? This motorcycle. Now, I found this motorcycle after years later after my dad passed away. Okay. My dad passed away in 89. Okay. I found this motorcycle probably about 10, 12 years ago. Okay. And I looked for five years. I just wanted to get a Norton International. The fact that I found a 49 right. the same year as his, right. dumb luck. I saw it, it was advertised out of the UK, small little magazine. One thing led to another and I had an expert here in town, Steve Hamill, who's known worldwide okay. for his work on British motorcycles, oh, okay. especially Vincent's. But I needed Steve's approval before I bought anything. And we got information on the bike, and we heard that this was a uh, race bike owned and raced by Norton Corporation. Oh. So this is one of their factory racers. Oh boy. This is all the original okay. today, still non-restored. And it's still the original paint. Everything's original. Everything's original. And it was raced by a well-known, world-renowned racer by the name of Ian Paskin. Oh. Ian since passed away. Mm -hmm. He was very well-known in Europe. And one of the most famous racetracks in the world, even today, is the Isle of Man. Right. Every year they yep. hold a race on the Isle of Man yep. through the country, streets and whatnot. And almost every year somebody gets killed. It's a yep. very dangerous track. And I happen to have a video of this motorcycle on the Isle Man track with Ian Paskin driving. And Jana, my wife and I, we went to the UK and spent a day with Ian Paskin to learn more about this motorcycle. And so it's a very neat motorcycle. It's got a lot of race history. 
the fact that at Norton Corporation, the fact he owned it. Now, did he work for Norton, or he was the he was sponsored by Norton? No, he was an engineer. Oh, and he was a racer. And he was a racer. <laughs> okay, well, that's pretty cool because if he's an engineer, he's able to ride and to kind of tweak things. That's I would right. imagine. So he, he rebuilt this engine. Okay. This engine's about ten thousand bucks to have it rebuilt. It's a very complex engine. If you were to look underneath, the lifter, lifters are exposed. I mean, when you run these bikes back in these days, especially exposed lifters, you got oil coming out all over the place. But um, interesting thing about Ian Paskin, he, like I said, he built this thing. When I was trying to buy this thing, I lost it. And if I told you that story. No. When I finally got Steve Hamill to connect with the guy that owned it, I missed it by three days. I spent three months trying to get history on it, verify, verify it had been, it had been rebuilt correctly. Wow. And then when Steve talked to, to Ian Paskin, Steve mm -hmm. got back to me and said, Gee, this guy is like the man. He, everything's been done right by that bike. I called and the guy said, Gene, I'm sorry. I sold it about three days ago. So now I went for another six months looking for another one. Okay. And every once in a while, Steve would say, Gene, that bike had history. There is no other there one. There is no other <laughs> one. And I found one in Canada. I found one in Florida. Okay. And we'd investigate it, and Steve said, no, nah, it wasn't restored properly or whatever. So finally, I called the guy that had the bike. Right. Got the name of the guy that bought the bike. Right. The gentleman answered the phone, and he was either in the UK or Ireland or something. And I said, listen, there's a mistake's been made. You have my motorcycle. <laughs> How did and that go over? <laughs> he had heard about me. Okay. He'd heard about this crazy American. <laughs> and I said, I caught, we gotta we got we gotta correct this mistake. Right. I need my bike. And I said, now I know what you paid for it. I'm willing to give you a good profit. Right. And the media is not Gene, I'm not interested in selling. I've been thinking of trying to buy one for my whole life. He's been chasing it as well. So. I said, no is not an acceptable answer today. Okay. It will be tomorrow, but not today. So I want you to put the number I offered him. By the way, I offered him twice of what he paid for it six months before. Wow. And, today, and he has still never had the thing running yet. It just never started. So I said, put that number on a piece of paper, pin it to the ceiling of your bedroom. <laughs> so it's the last thing you see before Brandon you shut your eyes. Sees when he wakes up, so. I hope you have the most miserable night you've ever had. <laughs> Call me in the morning and I, you'll sleep like a baby the next night. <laughs> so he called me the next day, he said, Gene, the bike is yours. Wow. And that's how I got the bike. And uh, wow. had it shipped over here. <laughs> so, and when Steve saw it, of course, he went crazy over it because it's all original. It's a preservation, it's like some of those cars we talked about the other day. Right. Never been, you know, changed or whatever. Still got all the original serial numbers, and I didn't realize it, but most vehicles have serial numbers on the engine, the mm -hmm. tranny. Mm -hmm. You're right. This has got serial numbers on the forks, the tank, transmission engine so you can know all those parts were born with that bike that's and right. they are still they're still there that's right so wow. anyways interesting story interesting well history. i got a great story out of it but also learned folks that you don't negotiate with gene because he wins uh, so eventually, <laughs> eventually he will wear you down but he's got the time to do it this is right gene thank you thank you so much this uh again i mean this is why we're doing this because it's a really cool bike but it's the story behind it, what the attraction is, uh, acquiring it, and then lovingly restoring it and showing it, and you share it with people. That's the cool That's part. You, you don't put it away in a, in, a, in a back room somewhere. You share it with people, and that is fantastic. And you know, it's not the vehicle, it's just the people. Right, The people in this hobby, as you've learned, yes. a lot of fun people. It We're is. trying to preserve history for the next generation. Exactly, exactly. We want, new, we want young, folks to come in and see these and just be enamored and in love with them and say yes one day I'm going to own that motorcycle and they'll they'll give Gene a piece of paper to put above his bed as well maybe yeah. one day so thank you Gene as always thank so you. much we're looking forward to doing more with you thank you for sharing today that's awesome